Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be um, attempting to install Hannah Montana Linux onto an Apple TV first generation. Now Hannah Montana Linux is one of those basically a meme uh, Linux distros that people have made memes about and posted videos about but today we're going to be installing it onto a first generation Apple TV. I'm going to be showing you some weird quirks of installing Linux onto the first generation Apple TV as we go along. The first thing that I did was of course download the Hannah Montana ISO. And we're going to go ahead and first install it into VirtualBox because in order to install Hannah Montana Linux on the Apple TV, we first have to install it in VirtualBox and then copy it over to the hard drive. So let's go ahead and name our virtual machine, Hannah Montana Linux and it's going to be Ubuntu 32-bit. Uh, Hopefully this is a 32-bit distro, not 64, otherwise this won't work at all. Uh, one gig of RAM, that's fine. Create a virtual hard disk now. I'm going to make this virtual hard disk, um, let's just say 35 gigabytes, because um, the hard drive that I'm going to be putting this on is going to be 40 gigabytes, and I don't want it to have any issues at all. So 35 gigabytes should be fine. So let's click on Create. Go to settings, storage, and let's select um, our Hannah Montana Linux ISO here. And let's start it up. And English. I want to do install Hannah Montana Linux. And why is there a black screen? Why is it not actually loading into the setup? Not, oh, there we go. Never mind. I guess it did load into the setup. All right, forward, and forward, and forward. Put in our name, put in a password, and then Hannah Montana TV, that's gonna be the name of our computer. Continue, and install. And while this is installing, I'm going to go ahead and download a couple of extra tools. So, what we're going to need to do is go to I think this is the link. Yes, it is. And we're going to need to download this source code here. And there it is. And we're also going to need to grab a recovery package from this Google code repository here, which is actually not available anymore. So we can go to archive.org, put it in, and choose a, a capture from 2008, whatever. Actually, I do need to choose a ca uh, capture from like 2011. Let's go to downloads. And let's grab both our Darwin Cross tools, which are pretty important. And we're also going to grab recovery 1.0.tar.gz. Because we're going to need a couple of files from that in order to get this working. We're going to go ahead and grab our Darwin cross tools and install them. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal. Dot slash install Darwin cross.sh. Type in our password. And there we go. That's very important. Now let's go to our ATV bootloader master.zip and let's extract that as well. And then we're also going to grab our recovery 1.0.tar.gz because we're going to need a couple of things from there. We have everything set up here. We can go ahead and restart Hannah Montana Linux and boot up into it. I don't need to, but I'm going to. Taking a surprisingly long time to load in. That's probably due to the lack of. Um, proper drivers for VirtualBox K. Okay, it seems to have been... Nice sound, bro. That has nothing to do with Hannah Montana, as far as I know. That's just the KDE sound, though. Let's turn off the computer. Turn off the computer. Shut down. I thought, I thought that the shutdown button was supposed to shut down the computer. There we go. I heard the sound, but okay, it's finally shutting down. 
Hopefully this isn't because it's one core and one gigabyte of RAM because I have a quarter of that on the Apple TV to play with. No, let's just power it off, I don't care. All right, now it's time to copy over the file system to the hard drive. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal here and go CD VirtualBox VM slash Hannah Montana Linux. And then we're gonna go ahead and run VBox manage clone HD dash dash format raw. I'll just put in quotes. All right, now it's converting. All right, clone medium created in format raw, UUID equals that. If we go ahead and open this with disk image mounter, we can see that, well, I guess it doesn't want to mount. Let's just try writing it to a disk. All right, now it's time to get the Apple TV hard drive out, which will involve opening up the Apple TV. All right, we have the Apple TV one on the bench, and now it's time to open the thing up and take out the hard drive. So um, the reason why I just peeled off is because I have opened this thing up before. I actually installed Mac OS X on it um, just for a little bit of fun just today, but I'm going to be installing Hannah Montana Linux on the hard drive. Now, I don't have to do that. I could install Hannah Montana Linux um, on a USB flash drive, but I think it'd be more fun if it's installed on the hard drive. So let's pull out the four screws on the side of the Apple TV and pull out the top cover. I'm actually going to remove the four screws from the hard drive enclosure as well. Definitely comes apart a lot easier this the second time I've opened it than the first. Let's pull out the IDE cable. And now it's time to plug this 40 gigabyte Apple hard drive into my computer. All right, the 40 gigabyte hard drive has mounted, so it's now time to format the drive. I'm gonna format as MBR for now, although it will need to be reformatted as GPT. And now we're going to create, now what we're going to do is I'm going to unmount the loop device. And I'm going to go ahead and write it to the disk using GNOME disks, destination 40 gigabyte hard drive, start restoring, and restore. And this is going to take, well, 21 minutes. And I'll come back once it's done. All right, less than a minute remaining. That definitely means less than a minute and not 3,000 years. I mean, sometimes means less than a minute, but it's also meant 3,000 years before. The disk image has now been 100% restored. There we go. Okay, it looks like the ext 3 partition actually does mount. Nice. So now it's time to open up our Gparted. Open this up, put in a password. Now what we're gonna do is we need to shift some partitions around. First, I'm gonna go ahead and unmount this partition because Gparted is stupid and doesn't automatically unmount things. And then we're and then we're gonna go ahead and proceed this with with I'm gonna I'm just gonna do 200 megabytes of space because that's where we're gonna put the Apple TV bootloaders. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on resize slash move. That's fine, I don't care. Apply, and now it's running E2FSCK-F-Y-V-C0 dev SDC1. So while it's uh, checking, I wanna talk a little bit about what all of this stuff actually means, because you might have easily been lost on why I needed all of these different things. So the way the Apple TV boots Linux is a little bit weird, because the Apple TV does not boot Linux in a normal way, the way that a PC does with EFI. Uh, it doesn't use Grub, it can't use Grub, because the Apple TV will only boot a single boot.efi, and that is the one that Apple shipped with the uh, TV. So, 
for this reason, I have the boot.efi. I require this completely legally, totally, completely, 100%, of course. And then the boot.efi is going to load a Darwin executable by the name of mock kernel. Now, what people have done is they decide to hack Linux um, inside of the mock kernel. And in order to make the mock kernel, you need the um, Darwin cross tools, which is why I had to install those. So we need to in order to install Linux, we're going to need to take um, the initrd and vm Linux files and copy the ones from Hannah Montana Linux onto here and then just type in make at the terminal. And that's going to make the kernel. Now the kernel parameters are going to be inside of this file, conda.apple.boot.plist, which I'm going to go ahead and open. These are our kernel flags. We're going to need to edit these later. All operations successfully completed. Let's go. The first thing we're going to do, unmount this, but not, don't, please. This is why you don't unmount through the system. It just completely deactivated the device. All right, now it's back up and running. Unmount. Now what we're going to do close this out and type in sudo gdisk slash dev slash sdc not slash dev slash sda um, why does it keep auto mounting itself I absolutely hate that feature now if I do w about to write gpt data that's fine after this I add an hfs plus partition for boot and it's completed you now have an untitled HFS plus partition on the drive. So stick a couple of files into a temporary directory known as sub to distro, because why not? And we're going to go ahead and copy initrd.img and vmlinus.img, or vmlinus, whatever. Now we're going to open this in arc. We're gonna grab our uncompressed. And this is this is the CPIO archive that we're gonna need. And we need to rename this to init rd. Head into the terminal and type in gzip init rd. Because the file must be called initrd.gz. Um, and then VM Linux, we're just gonna rename to VM Linux. Now, let's go ahead back to our downloads. Go to recovery here. Not recovery. We're going to go to ATV Bootloader Master. And we're going to go ahead and move this here and overwrite and move and move our VM Linux as well. And this we don't need. So now we need to open another terminal. I don't need this terminal anymore. And we just need to type in the following command. It's, it's an incredibly simple command that everyone will understand. And we just typed in make, and now we're done. We're going we're to go ahead and grab our mock kernel. We're going to copy it. Then we're going to go ahead and paste it into here. Overwrite. And now we're going to add the system folder, boot.efi, bootlogo.png, com.apple.boot.plist, and mock kernel all to our untitled right here. All that's there. This system uh, folder just has a dummy kext that tr uh, tricks the system into thinking that it actually is booting Mac OS. So that's why that exists. So now. Let's go ahead to com.apple.boot.plist. Let's not open it in Conqueror. Let's open it in Notepad QQ. And then we're going to go ahead and change the kernel flags to rw root equals should be uuid equals that, hopefully. And we should be able to now put the 
drive back into the Apple TV and boot it up. After this, I reassembled the Apple TV and set it up on my desk. Alright, so I actually plugged everything in. There's no proof though because I can't show my face. And I just realized I forgot the keyboard and the mouse. But we're about to see the Apple TV boot up into Linux. I'll show you the very epic boot process that happens. First, it hangs at a black screen for... This is taking a concerning amount of time. It was faster on a f***ing USB flash drive than on... There we go! Okay, that took a very short amount of time to actually get to starting Linux. Okay, why is it... Oh. Oh, looks like it loaded drivers. Oh, ho, ho, no way! <laughs> Look at that, bro! It worked the first try! First try! Alright. <laughs> Looks like it's in. Looks like we're in. Very slow. That's one thing I want to say about it. Oh god, this is RAM. Why is the font DPI so f***ing low? All right, now it's downloaded. There we go. Look at that. There it is, bro. There it is. Apple Inc. Mac F4228DC8. Yep. This thing has no idea what it is. Yeah, 2.6.28. That's before support for the Apple TV frame buffer was in the kernel. So no wonder it didn't actually show a command line thing at, at during boot. But it actually works. Look at that. And performance isn't half bad either. So that was Hannah Montana Linux on the Apple TV first generation. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you didn't, make sure to hit that dislike button. Check out my Twitter. I post behind the scenes content, a lot of behind the scenes content on there. And I also post about random stuff that you probably care about. I don't know. You might care about, I don't know. Check out the links in the description for information on how I did this. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the future.